Hello and welcome to the All Flyers. In my last video, I listed celebrated aircraft designers and the standout aircraft they created. Clarence Kelly Johnson of Lockheed's Skunk Works, for instance. Lockheed's standout aircraft was the F-104 Starfighter, a remarkable aircraft for its time, though it earned a reputation, particularly in Germany, of the name Widowmaker. More on that later. In November 1951, the Korean War was 17 months old. American pilots were confronting the MiG-15 with North American F-86 Sabres, and many pilots felt that the MiGs were superior to the larger and more complex American fighters. Kelly Johnson visited US Air Force air bases across South Korea to speak with fighter pilots about what they wanted in a fighter aircraft. The pilots requested a small and simple aircraft with excellent performance, especially high speed and high altitude capabilities. Johnson started the design of such an aircraft upon his return to the United States. In March 1982, his team was assembled. They studied over 100 aircraft configurations, ranging from small designs at just 8,000 pounds to large ones up to 50,000 pounds. To achieve the desired performance, Lockheed chose a small and simple aircraft weighing in at 12,000 pounds with a single powerful engine. The engine chosen was the new General Electric J79 turbojet, an engine of dramatically improved performance in comparison with contemporary design. Johnson presented his new fighter concept to the United States Air Force on the 5th of November 1952. Three other companies were invited to submit competing plans. Republic Aviation chose the AP-55, an improved version of its prototype XF-91 Thunder Scepter. North American Aviation with the NA-212, which eventually evolved into the F-107. Northrop Corporation with its N-102 Fang, another J-79 powered entry. Lockheed had what proved to be an insurmountable head start and was granted a development contract on the 12th of March 1953. On the 4th of March 1954, the Lockheed XF-104 took to the skies for the first time. The Starfighter featured a radical design with thin stubby wings attached farther back on the fuselage than most contemporary aircraft. The wing provided excellent supersonic and high speed low altitude performance but also poor turning capability and a high landing speed. It was the first production aircraft to achieve Mark II and the first aircraft to reach an altitude of 100,000 feet after taking off under its own power. The Starfighter established world records for airspeed, altitude and time to climb in 1958, becoming the first aircraft to hold all three simultaneously. It was also the first aircraft to be equipped with the M61 Vulcan autocannon. Just a few months later, it was pressed into action during the second Taiwan Strait crisis to deter the rise of Chinese MiG-15 and MiG-17 fighters. Problems with the General Electric J79 engine and a preference for fighters with longer ranges and heavier payloads initially limited its service with the US Air Force, though it was reactivated for service during the Berlin crisis of 1961 and the Vietnam War when it flew more than 5,000 combat sorties. 15 NATO and Allied Air Forces eventually flew the Starfighter, many for longer than the US Air Force. The Starfighter was marketed by Lockheed as the missile with a man in it. In October 1958, West Germany selected the F-104 as its primary fighter aircraft. Canada soon followed, then the Netherlands, Belgium, Japan and Italy. In 1975, it was revealed that Lockheed had bribed many foreign military and political figures to secure purchase contracts. The United States Senate Investigating Committee 
led by Senator Frank Church, determined that Lockheed had paid US $22 million in bribes to foreign officials during the negotiation processes for the sale of its aircraft, including the F-104 Starfighter. In Germany, Minister of Defence Franz Josef Strauss was accused of having received at least US $10 million for West Germany's purchase of the F-104 in 1961. On the 26th of August 1976, Prince Consort Bernhard of the Netherlands was forced to resign as Inspector General of the Dutch Armed Forces after being accused of accepting approximately $1 million in bribes. The Starfighter had a poor safety record, especially in Luftwaffe service. The Germans lost 292 of 916 aircraft and 116 pilots from 1961 to 1989. The F-104G for Germany, Super Starfighter, featured a more powerful J7911A engine, a larger tail with powered rudder, improved blown flaps with a mode for improved manoeuvrability, electric de-icing equipment for the air intake inlets, and a larger drag chute. The Starfighter's airframe was all metal, primarily duralumin with some stainless steel and titanium. The fuselage was approximately two and a half times as long as the airplane's wingspan. The wings were centered on the horizontal reference plane or along the longitudinal center line of the fuselage and were located substantially further aft on the fuselage than most contemporary designs. The aft fuselage was elevated from the horizontal reference plane, resulting in a lifted tail and the nose was drooped. This caused the aircraft to fly nose up, helping to minimize drag. As a result, the pitot tube, air inlet scoops, and engine thrust line were all canted slightly from center line of the fuselage. Most jet fighters of the period used a swept wing or delta wing, which balanced aerodynamic performance, lift, and internal space for fuel and equipment. The Lockheed tests determined that the most efficient shape for high-speed supersonic flight was a very small and thin, straight, mid-mounted trapezoidal wing. Much of the data on the wing shape was derived from testing done with the experimental unmanned Lockheed X-7, which used a wing of similar shape. The leading edge of the wing was swept back at 26 degrees, with the trailing edge swept forward by a slightly smaller amount. The new wing design was extremely thin, with a thickness to cord ratio of only 3.36% and an aspect ratio of 2.45. The wing's leading edges were so thin, just 0.41 millimeter, that they were a hazard to ground crews. Hence, protective guards were installed on them during maintenance. The thinness of the wings required fuel tanks and landing gear to be placed in the fuselage. The small, highly loaded wing caused unacceptably high landing speed, even after adding both leading and trailing edge flaps. Designers developed a boundary layer control system to blow over the trailing edge flaps to lower landing speeds by more than 30 knots. The flaps and the wing, the slots is starting to be visible, but no LEDs point. 50 degrees leading edge, 50 degrees trailing edge. Now they're proceeding to the land position, which is 45 degrees down, and the slot gradually open, and the air start flowing on the back side of the flaps. No air on the other side of it. A lot of hot air, very high pressure, and a lot of volume. This is just a, a idle. It probably would blow you off the tarmac at military position. Now the flaps travel back up to the takeoff position again and the air gradually gets shut down. And the aircraft will be ready for takeoff in that configuration. Landing without the boundary layer engaged was only done in emergencies and could be a harrowing experience, especially at night. The stabilator was mounted atop the fin to reduce inertia coupling. Because the vertical fin was only slightly shorter, than the length of each wing and nearly as aerodynamically effective, 
it could act as a wing on rudder application, rolling the aircraft in the opposite direction of rudder input. To offset this effect, the wings were canted downwards at a 10 degree negative dihedral angle. The fuselage was slender, tapered towards the sharp nose. The fuselage and wing combination provided low drag except at high angle of attack. The F-104 had good acceleration, rate of climb and top speed, but its sustained run performance was poor. A clean F-104 could sustain a 7G turn below 5,000 feet with full afterburner. Given the aircraft's prodigious fuel consumption at that altitude and relatively small fuel capacity, such a manoeuvre would dramatically reduce its time on station. Unlike some supersonic aircraft, the F-104 did not have variable geometry inlets. Instead, at high Mach numbers, excess air was bypassed around the engine. Its thrust to drag ratio was excellent, allowing a maximum speed well in excess of Mark II. The aircraft was capable of even higher Mark numbers if the aluminium skin of the aircraft were able to withstand the heating due to air friction. Early star fighters used a downward firing ejection seat, the Stanley C-1, out of concern of the ability of its upward firing seat to clear the T-tail empennage. This presented obvious problems in low altitude escapes and 21 US Air Force pilots, including test pilot Captain Ivan Carl Kinchelo, failed to escape from their stricken aircraft in low level emergencies because of it. Many export starfighters were later retrofitted with the Martin Baker Mark 7 0, 0 in other words, zero altitude and zero airspeed ejection seats. The International Service of the F-104 began to wind down in the late 1970s, being replaced in many cases by the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, but it remained in service with some air forces for another two decades. The last operational starfighters served with the Italian Air Force, which retired them on the 31st of October 2004. The F-104 was the first aircraft to simultaneously hold the world speed and altitude records. On the 16th of May 1958, US Air Force Captain Walter W. Irwin set a world flight airspeed record of 1,404 miles per hour. Lieutenants William T. Smith and Elna N. Voldson set several time to climb records on the 13th and 14th of December 1958, reaching 3,000 feet in 42 seconds and 25,000 feet in 266 seconds. US Air Force Major Robert W. Smith on 6th of December 1963 flew his F-104 to an unofficial altitude record of 120,800 feet. Jacqueline Cochran, a Lieutenant Colonel in the US Air Force Reserve, set three women's world speed records in an F-104. The F-104's takeoff speeds were between 180 and 200 knots, with the pilot needing to swiftly raise the landing gear to avoid exceeding the maximum landing gear operating speed of 260 knots. Climb and cruise performance were outstanding. Landings were also performed at high speed. The downwind leg of the circuit was typically flown at approximately 210 knots with flaps in landing configuration with a long flat final approach flown at around 175 knots. Extra fuel, crosswinds or gusts, external stalls and other considerations could add up to 20 knots to that speed. Unlike most aircraft, the F-104 was landed with the engine at high power as the boundary layer control system lost effectiveness below approximately 82% engine speed. A serious design issue that the aircraft encountered was T-tail flutter. Dick Heppy, who served as the initial project aerodynamics engineer for the F-104 program, recalled that without question, the single most difficult technical challenge 
encountered in the development program was the catastrophic flutter problem of the unique T-tiled empennage configuration, end of quote. The F-104 had been designed as a high-speed, high-altitude fighter. In West German service, it was mainly used as a low-level fighter bomber. In 1966, Johannes Steenhoff took over command of the Luftwaffe and grounded the entire Luftwaffe and Bundesmarine F-104 fleet until he was satisfied that problems had been resolved or at least reduced. Eric Hartmann, the world's top scoring fight race, commanded one of West Germany's first post-war jet fighter equipped wings and deemed the F-104 to be an unsafe aircraft with poor handling characteristics for aerial combat. In Navy service, it lacked the safety margin of a twin engine design such as the Blackburn Buccaneer. To the dismay of his superiors, Hartmann judged the fighter unfit for Luftwaffe use even before its introduction. Eric Winkle Brown described the Starfighter as a hot ship that, in quotes, has to be flown every inch of the way. The US Air Force required Starfighter pilots to have at least 1,500 flight hours of experience prior to flying the F-104. West German pilots had around 400 hours experience. Eric Winkle Brown recommended the Blackburn Buccaneer instead. The combined losses of F-104 aircraft by country were Germany 35%, Belgium 41%, Italy 37%, Canada 46%, Denmark 24%, Norway 14%, Spain 0% after 17,500 flight hours. Can you imagine today boarding a jet airliner to fly somewhere knowing you had only a 60% chance of arriving at your destination? That would be intolerable. FAA lists 12 privately owned F-104s as of 2019. Conclusion. The F-104 Starfighter was a brilliant but flawed design excellent for high-speed intercepts but dangerously unforgiving in routine operations. Its high accident rate stemmed from its aerodynamic compromises, single engine risk and unsuitable NATO mission profile, making it one of the most lethal jet fighters ever flown. Not for the enemy, but for the pilot. If you have enjoyed this presentation, please like and subscribe consider a dollar donation to fund further stories.